We have been serving up uh, wonderful homemade dishes since 1860. Now, I haven't been around since 1860, but I have been around for quite a few years. And today, I would love to welcome my cousin, Von Seal Moser, Hi. who has been making wonderful coconut cakes for our family for many, many years. Today, we're going to share our Grandma Dobbs recipe with you, which is a homemade cake with these ingredients. And today we're going to share Von Seal's secret recipe, which happens to be very simple and is a great way for today's busy homemaker to make a wonderful dish that she could give as a gift or um, take to a birthday party. And her secret is frozen coconut, the same secret that Grandma Dobbs used. So we would love to share this cake with you. And now I'd like for my guest, Von Seal Moser, to explain her wonderful cake recipe to you. Simple, wonderful, and everyone will love it. Thank you, Sherry. I just make it by the box recipe on the back and cook it. I'll take a serrated knife, slice it lengthwise, make four layers instead of two, and then the frosting is 12 ounces of Cool Whip, 12 ounces of coconut, eight ounces of sour cream, and a cup and a half of sugar. Okay, the ingredients for our super fast, great, great cake are one box of white cake mix, Cook according to the directions on the box. Simple, simple. Your frosting, the secret to this recipe. 16 ounces of Cool Whip thawed. 16 ounces of frozen coconut. Remember, only use frozen coconut. Eight ounces of sour cream and one and a half cup of sugar. Now the secret to this is mix the sour cream, mix the sugar and mix the Cool Whip, but mix it for about five minutes until the sugar is completely dissolved and completely smooth. Um, and then you layer the coconut in with the frosting and there's your end result. And I promise you, you can, you can take it to your mother-in-law and she will not know <laughs> that you didn't work all day long to make this cake. Granny's recipe was wonderful, but this one, easy, simple, and in half the time with half the ingredients. And we'd love for you to share the cake with us now. The best part of this show is sharing this wonderful cake with our friends, and we are going to slice and celebrate. This cake really brings a reason to celebrate. Bring in your friends, bring in your neighbors, and watch them smile. Now, you see the four layers? This is a very simple, simple way to make lots of folks happy. I think it's time for me to sample this cake. What do y'all think? Mm -mm. Wonderful as always. Absolutely wonderful. Light and fresh, and nobody knows it's not homemade. Mm. Hi, welcome back to Harris Farm, where I am thrilled to death to have my friend Myrna Denson visiting. Myrna and I have been friends for longer than we care to discuss. Um, 30 some odd years ago, she used to eat in my mother's restaurant and had mother's famous meatloaf. Now tonight, we're gonna have my meatloaf, um, but we're also gonna make what mother would have made. Mother didn't use a recipe, didn't always use the same ingredients, and my brother, who thinks he never ate onions, ate plenty of onions because mother put everything in the blender. So we're gonna show you how to feed your children without letting them know they're having onions, they're having beets, they're having salsa, they're having anything you wanna clean out of the refrigerator and put it in mother's meatloaf. We're gonna chop some loaf bread. Loaf bread. Now, how old is this bread? Oh, it's been in the refrigerator about two weeks. Okay. Doesn't hurt it a bit. It's been refrigerated. Okay, we're going to cube, cube it. Okay. And we have two bottles of almost gone ketchup, and we're going to add right. a little bit of water to it because Mother would clean out the refrigerator that would be so and never right. throw anything away. Okay. Okay, now we're going to put this in the blender. Now, put the bread in first. Let's put some liquid in first. Okay. And all of a sudden, we have two empty ketchup bottles. Mother would be so proud of me. No, she, she never wasted it. anything. Oh, we lot of sandwiches were good. We could not wait to leave the law office to go get them at lunchtime. Right. I liked mine with slaw, onions, mayonnaise, and ketchup. Couldn't beat it. I liked mine. Mayonnaise on one slice of the bread and ketchup and mustard on the other. That sounds pretty good. Okay, I can pour some more in. Okay. Okay. A little bit of A1 sauce. Okay. And if I had some Heinz 57, I'd throw it in there, but I didn't find any, so. How about one more egg? One more egg. And then we are going to chop up the onion. 
that my brother doesn't eat, but he's eating plenty of them in Mama's meatloaf. That means three, three eggs. Right. Okay. Now we're gonna have to add a little bit of water to this, and then Miss Marna is going to. Okay. Got it? Okay, Miss Marna is going to put it on and puree it. Puree, puree, puree. I had to move. There you go. We are going to mix ground chuck and ground beef. And to that, we're going to add the mixture. I can't tell there's any onion in there, can I you? I see the onion. And I don't believe Roy will ever know. And we'll not tell him. And we're gonna put it in the oven at 375 for about 45 to 55 minutes. It smells great. Ooh, it smells great. Oh, it smells wonderful. I can't wait to have a meatloaf sandwich. I can't. Thanks for stopping by Harris Farm. Hope you'll come back to see us next week. See ya. Thank you, Miss Myrna. Thank it was a bomb. I man. love you so much. Hi, folks. Welcome to Heart of the Home. We're at the home of Mike and Sandy Denson, and I have my granddaughter, Ansley Bruce, visiting with me today. And we're going to prepare a simple, simple recipe. Um, I think Mike and Sandy are preparing for a barbecue for the 4th of July, and I'm going to teach Ansley, who will share this recipe with all her friends, the easiest recipe you've ever done. A friend of mine, Paulette Massey, shared this recipe with me four years ago, and yesterday we named it Ice Cream Sandwich Heaven because it is heavenly. Light, easy, simple, and five minutes. How about that? Five minutes. Now, the ingredients for this are ice cream sandwiches, and we use the mini sandwiches, and Paulette's recipe was Cool Whip. Well, because I couldn't remember that, I adjusted and used marshmallow cream. We're going to use both today. And then um, you complement this with pineapple, strawberry, wonderful wet nuts, chocolate, or butterscotch. And if you make it and your family says, I don't like pineapple, just make it with the chocolate and butterscotch. This is a recipe that you can improvise and you can, if your children don't like strawberries, take the strawberries out. We've already unwrapped our mini sandwiches. We're covering our layer of sandwiches with the marshmallow cream. And then we are going to start putting some of the condiments on there. We're gonna start with pineapple. And basically you just spread the pineapple on there. There's your first flavor. We have marshmallow and pineapple. Now we're gonna cover the pineapple with Cool Whip. And we bought fat-free Cool Whip. I know that sounds crazy, but you can't tell a dime's worth of difference in the taste. And you do lose a few of those calories. And we're going to add some strawberry to this. And keep in mind, if there's anything in this that your family doesn't like, adjust it. Go to caramel, go to chocolate, um, do whatever you need to make sure your family's happy with it. I even bought some um, chocolate Cool Whip because I have some precious little granddaughters who love chocolate. And I know that Miss Lily would love to have this with chocolate. And we're going to drizzle some caramel over this. And then with the caramel, we will top off with chocolate. And I think Paulette tells me she uses two full jars of nuts, so I think we'll try that. Miss Ainsley, what do you think of that? I think it looks very good. Very good. I think it looks very good. I think it's going to look better when we add a few cherries to it. There you go ice cream sandwich heaven and it is heavenly you will enjoy it your family will enjoy it and you will make this over and over again remember simple easy took us about five minutes done deal okay miss ansley look easy simple and i'm gonna dip you one up to enjoy oh my goodness looks like an ice cream sundae doesn't it yes. oh goodness Enjoy the 4th of July. United we stand. Wow, I am so glad that we had those memories. Precious Myrna Denson, precious Von Seal Moser. I had Von Seal's cake for years and years and years. Had no idea until we did Heart of the Home 
that that was not a made from scratch cake. Everybody showed up at our homecoming at church and everybody went straight for that cake because they knew it was the best thing in the house. Oh my gosh. And Miss Myrna did work for um, the Landrums at the lawyer's office and she would come over there and get a meatloaf sandwich all the time. Miss Freddie Hamrick would always come and get a roast beef sandwich and she'd have mustard on one piece of the bread, mayonnaise on the other, lettuce and tomato and salt and pepper and I can remember it like it was yesterday. It's so crazy how these precious memories mean so much. I want to read something out of Mike's book and this is, this is so funny how we all have a gift and everybody says that I have the gift of cooking. I deliver food to neighbors, I deliver food to family when somebody um, passes away or somebody's hurting or a birthday or whatever, I deliver food. It's one of the few things I can do without any problems, no issues, I can cook a little bit. Okay, we all have a gift. Some animals in the wild have symbolic relationships. That's when two animal species come together to form a mutual relationship that is beneficial to them both. The zebra and the ostrich have that type of relationship. Zebras have poor vision, but a great sense of smell and hearing. The ostrich has great vision, but does not smell or hear well. Isn't that weird? The two travel together to warn each other, to warn each other of the impending danger. Each one of these animals benefit from the strength of the other. It keeps them safe from lions on the hunt. The body of Christ is very similar. All believers have God-given gifts to use for the benefit of others. The Bible says each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. And that's 1 Peter 4.10. Paul said, For just as each of us have one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, through many, form one body and one member belongs to all the others. Romans 12, 4, 5. Each part, each member plays is, val is vital and only you can play it. We are like the zebra and the ostrich. We need each other. Boy, you're not kidding. You are not kidding. Um, you know how much your prayers mean to me. You know that um, all of you who are with me through all the things that happened to us 13 years ago couldn't have made it without you. Absolutely could not have made it without you. There's no way in the world that I could have sat there alone and handled what I did. When I came back to television after Angela's death, my producer said, it's too soon. You can't come back. And I said, no, you don't understand. I said, I have to come back or I will never make it. I have to come back. I have to feel the warmth of the people who love me. And I have to feel like I can give of something. And last night I was watching Kennesaw State University is doing a, um, a visual of what suicide does. And I was blown away by all the backpacks that are lining the ball field at Kennesaw State University from suicides. And I was just like, wow, wow. I know what I've been through. I know that I survived it. I know that many of you are a part of why I survived it. I know that what you did for me, reaching out to me, whether it was a call, a letter, let's go to lunch, let's go drive somewhere and, and see something different, whatever you did, it helped me through those, those moments that I didn't think I would survive. As I get on Facebook every day, I see somebody who's facing what I faced. And I always tell them the same thing. The hurt will never go away, but there will be a place of peace that you finally get to learn to live with this. And so today, as I look back to these beautiful women who made me stronger and who helped me, I love being able to share that little bit of life that was fun, it was happy, um, great things from, from good people who shared my life. And I remember so many special things about each of them. So today, again, I'm going to say, reach out, pick up your phone, call somebody, say, let's go to lunch. Let's take a beautiful drive up in the mountains. It's not going to rain until tomorrow afternoon. So get out and enjoy a little bit of what God has done for us. It's all free. It doesn't cost us a penny. Well, it does cost gas. And that, boy, that's something else. I'm spending $15 a day on gas and not going anywhere I don't have to go. Isn't that crazy? But it is, everything is beautiful in the spring. It all looks new. It all looks fresh and bright. So get out and enjoy it. Right now, we're going to take you back to some of my favorite heart of the homes. And this is when it first started. We never did a retake on heart of the home. We never started over. 
We did it. It was a four-minute segment. We zam, bam, it was done. It was crazy. I don't know how it all worked and how it was made so simple and so much fun, but it truly was. So let's share a little bit more of that today. I'm Sherry Martin. Tonight on Heart of the Home, we're going to do a really simple recipe. My guest, Johnson Collins, said she's not crazy about tomatoes, but I'm going to make a dish you might like. You like pizza? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So you've eaten pizza on tomatoes. And these have a few of the spices that pizza has. And we're going to have mozzarella cheese. So you might end up liking this. And it's got garlic. And you know, our buddy that films this for us, it's got a horrible cold, and we don't want to get her cold. So we're going to stuff her full of garlic, aren't we? Yeah. I think that's a good plan. This is a really quick and simple recipe. The ingredients are Hunt's tomatoes. We are using two cans of diced and one can of whole that we're gonna actually cut in half. Uh, mozzarella cheese, a little bit of sugar, a stick of butter, salt, pepper, garlic salt, a few bacon bits, and Johnson. Garlic crisp. Garlic crisp, and Johnson is gonna actually, you're just gonna break all those up in little pieces and we're gonna add them to this. We're gonna bake it antioxidants from the tomatoes, a few spices, a whole lot of garlic, and it's going to be a quick and simple recipe. Okay, Miss Johnson, now your job is to crush all those little crisps that are left. Go right into crushing. Okay, Miss Johnson, we've put two cans of the diced tomatoes in here. And to that, we're going to add a can of whole tomatoes. And I told you this is simple. It's going to get a little bit of sugar, not much, because the tomatoes are naturally sweet. We're just going to sprinkle it with a little bit of sugar. And we're going to add black pepper. And a little bit of garlic salt. Some onions. This should be a good antioxidant recipe, shouldn't it? It should also whew, keep everybody from getting a cold. Cut the butter up in just large chunks. It will melt and make this even crispier with the garlic crisp because the butter and the crisp will melt together. So we're going to add a few bacon bits to this. And we're using the real bacon bits. Um, you can fry your own or you can buy these that come in the package, but these are the real ones. They're not those hard ones that come in the can. Now, Miss Johnson is going to add the garlic crisp. And we need these really, really crushed up good. Have you got them? I think you can crush them a little bit more. All right, let's see how those feel. Oh, man, that looks perfect. See, we're just going to sprinkle these on top, which is going to add the flavor of the garlic. And then it'll add the texture of the crunchiness. I'm going to cover this in mozzarella cheese, and we're going to bake it. Okay, here we go. We're going to stick it in the oven. 30 minutes at 325. There you go. Okay. Well, Johnson, it's ready. We're going to pretend this is upside-down pizza. Mm -hmm. You weren't sure you'd like scalloped tomatoes, but if we pretend the crust is on top, there's the cheese, the tomatoes are in the bottom, antioxidants, a lot of garlic, good for you with a cold. We're going to pretend it's pizza and we're going to try it. It smells great, doesn't it? Yes. It smells good. It's going to be very hot, I can assure you of that. Mm. Guys, this was a simple recipe. It was very inexpensive and we used my leftovers, didn't we? Yes, we did. Got to use those leftovers. Um, antioxidants, a little calcium. It was easy. It was fun. Bye-bye. Welcome back, folks. Tonight on Heart of the Home, my special guests, Allura, Johnson, and Darian, are going to help me with a very simple recipe that was submitted by Miss Lana Wiswell from Jupiter, Florida. Lana and her mom watch us weekly on streaming videos. And she promised me this was a recipe that children would like to do. So we're going to do this, and it's going to teach us a little bit. It's going to teach us a little bit about hot and cold. So you ready, guys? You ready? Good. Okay, let's start. The ingredients for this item called eggs in a bag are eggs and any condiments you want. I like salsa, you like ham, and you like cheese. So we're going to combine our ingredients. We're going to drop it in this freezer bag and in 13 minutes we're going to have an omelet. Isn't that wild? We don't use a frying pan, we don't use any butter, 
and we're gonna cook it in boiling water. Okay guys, let's assemble our bags. The first thing we're gonna do is put your name on it so when the bags come out of the water, you know what's yours. Okay, Allura, how do you spell your name? A-L-U-R-A. A-L-L-U-R-A. Okay. When we put your ingredients in here, you'll know this is yours when it comes out of the hot boiling water. Okay, guys? Now, we're going to put two eggs in each one, and we're going to start with Miss Allura. So, Miss Allura, tell me what ingredients you want, sweetheart. Do you want ham? Do you want cheese? Ham and cheese, okay. We're gonna have ham and cheese. And this is so neat. And where did my fork go? Darian, there you go. My helper's hiding my fork. Okay. And remember guys, this is, you time it and you boil this for 13 minutes. Miss Allura, here we go. That fork looks just like gold. It is gold, isn't it? It looks like gold. It came from Cinderella's castle. Right. Okay, Allura, you hang on to yours. Don't drop it. Hold on. Okay, Johnson, what do you want in your sweetheart? Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. And remember, guys, do two eggs. I tested this last week on my growing boys who were racing go-karts, and I thought three eggs would be good for them. That didn't work. It didn't get done in 13 minutes. Ham and cheese for Miss Johnson. I think this is such a neat idea. When they submitted it, I thought, well, somebody's bumped their head. You can't boil anything in a plastic bag, but I've done it three times now, and it's really neat. Miss Johnson, hang on to yours. There you go, hold it at the top. Okay, Darian, what do you want in yours, honey? Same kind. Same kind, ham and cheese. Y'all aren't gonna stray. Nobody wants bacon? Nope. Ham and cheese. We're gonna get it. There you go. Two eggs, remember? Two eggs. You know, last time Allura was here, we made egg salad. Okay, Darian, there's yours. Now the trick is we're gonna drop these in boiling water for 13 minutes, okay? Okay, I'm gonna drop one in first, and then I want y'all to follow me. Now drop your bags in. There you go. And in 13 minutes, we'll have a perfect omelet. I'm gonna take these out of the water because I don't want the kids to get burned, and it really is hot. Remember, boiling water, be very careful when you do this. But it's been fun, and I think the kids have enjoyed this one. And it is something you can do for Mother's Day and not mess up the kitchen because look at that, a perfect omelet and it didn't mess up the kitchen and there's no fat, we use no butter, no olive oil. Folks, enjoy your family, enjoy your friends. Thank you so much for coming back to see me and y'all promise you'll come back. Bye bye, happy Mother's Day everybody. See you again on Heart of the Homes. Hi, I'm Sherry Martin and tonight on Heart of the Home, my buddy Johnson Collins, one of my favorite guests, is here to help me celebrate. What are we celebrating? The one year anniversary. The one year anniversary of Heart of the Home. We've been on the air a year. We've had a lot of fun. We've done some simple recipes. We've done some good recipes. You helped with a deer recipe. And tonight, um, we have a friend who's going to come by and bring us a special dessert. While we're waiting on Miss Lucy, Johnson and I are going to talk about something that I never forgot. In the eighth grade, I had a really special teacher. My home ec teacher, Mrs. Maisel Kemp, loved her, absolutely loved her. And she taught me some really simple things that I never forgot. And I hope to teach you some simple things that you won't forget. One of them is how to set a table. You don't just grab a fork. You do salad fork, dinner fork. What is this fork for? Um. How about an appetizer or a shrimp cocktail? Kind of looks like a baby fork, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, everybody um, should learn to set the table correctly. And today, we're just gonna talk a little bit about that and some of the things that you do need to learn because someday you may be entertaining the governor. What do you think of that? Okay, Miss Johnson, now, I'm gonna take these apart. You've seen how the table's set. Do you think you can do it now if I remove them? Yes. Okay, let's do this. Now, you decide how you put them correctly back in place. 
And you know, you can use linen na napkins too. On our formal table, we iron and use linen napkins. That's not one of my favorite things because I usually get to iron the napkins. But today we're gonna use paper because we're using the casual table in the breakfast room. There you go. Now, what's that fork? This one mm -hmm. is a salad fork. Salad fork, your dinner fork. And do you know if we went to a really, really foo-foo restaurant, we might have another fork. Would that confuse you? Yes. Maybe. And if we had soup, we'd have a soup spoon. And if we had iced tea, we'd have another spoon. This could get confusing, guys. Now, how old are you? Nine. Nine. That could really confuse a nine-year-old. You learned pretty quickly, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I think you're pretty smart. You gonna go home and share this with mom and dad? Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, I think I hear our special dessert coming in the door. <gasps> it's time to celebrate. <laughs> There you go. Johnson, I promised you a cake for a celebration. Yes. Our friend Lucy Van Doren just made us a wonderful, simple dessert. Lucy, tell me about it. It's a homemade angel food cake. Yes. Uh, all you do is slice it in three layers, just like you would, uh, you know, a regular cake. Mm -hmm. And uh, you use a serrated knife because if you don't, it will tear it. Okay. Okay? Okay. And then all you do is take a 20-ounce can of crushed pineapple, an 8-ounce Cool Whip and two instant puddings, vanilla puddings, and you don't do anything except mix the, those three ingredients together. If you put anything else in it, it's going to be too gooey. Mm -hmm. So that's all. Very simple. And that looks simple, looks elegant. Looks like it's going to be light. It is. It's very looks light. like it's going to be light. And you can, you don't have to make a homemade cake. No. You can go to the store and for what, $1.99? Right. Buy an angel food cake, show up at homecoming with this, right. and somebody's going to think you've cooked all day. <laughs> Garnish it with strawberries, right? right? Whatever mm -hmm. fruit is in season. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to enjoy this. Thank you, Lucy, for stopping well, by to welcome. help us celebrate our one uh, year anniversary. You can also do the sides if you want to oh, with yeah. another mix of Cool Whip and right. pineapple and right. pudding. Right. Um, and we love simple desserts. Right. This, is, this is a good simple dessert. We promised you a simple dessert for our one year anniversary. Thank you so much, guys. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Sherry Martin. Tonight on Heart of the Home, I promised you a rich, rich recipe, mm -hmm. and wow, is it rich. I've been eating this cake for about 30 something years. You were two years old. No, because uh -oh. I'm only 29. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> well, okay. My daughter, Angela, was only two the first time I had this cake. Gosh, does that make me or you old? Neither one. Okay, neither one. It is a rich recipe. This was submitted by Doreen Lee. She's from Kankakee, Illinois. And she got the recipe from, I think, a junior league cookbook there many, many years ago. Rich, rich, rich chocolate cinnamon cake. Rich and good. Mm -hmm. Now, I made my first one last week. And Angela's gonna go over the ingredients for you. There are two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, one cup of butter, a fourth cup baking cocoa, one cup water, half a cup of buttermilk, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two eggs, and one teaspoon of salt. Now, if y'all have been tuning in to Heart of the Home, we all know I'm not much at measuring. Now, we're going to add, we are actually measuring, aren't we? <gasps> we measured today. We I don't never do that. <laughs> well, we're measuring today because this cake is pretty precise, and mm -hmm. we need to measure this. Okay, Angela, we have combined two cups of flour, two cups of sugar. We sifted that, and now we're melting our cup of butter with our cocoa and our water. We're going to let that melt good, and then we're going to pour it over the dry ingredients, and then we're going to add our buttermilk and our cinnamon and our vanilla and our eggs. And our soda. Tiny bit of soda, tiny bit of salt. It's going to be ready to bake. This is a simple recipe using plain flour. And the chocolate's already smelling so oh, good. Oh, man, this chocolate smells great. This is what makes this cake rich. Mm -hmm. Butter and chocolate. Kind of like a man mm -hmm. with a 401k and a state retirement. Now, and that's an out-of-town hobby. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's rich. That's rich. <laughs> now, this is, what, a 10 by 15 pan? Sure. It's a little bit larger than normal, and that's the size pan that this recipe requires. It's going to be in the oven for 30 minutes or until a toothpick put in comes out dry. Do not overbake it. My first one, I did overbake it, so watch it closely. Now, this rich, rich recipe for our icing is, Angela, the amount of butter is one cup of butter, one what? bag of 10x sugar. Fourth cup of cocoa. Fourth cup of cocoa. Um, six tablespoons of milk. 
a See? teaspoon of vanilla. That's it. Boil it in a saucepan. That is it, guys, and it is so simple. And you pour it over the cake hot. Man. I think this deserves the rich and powerful. Ooh, man, it's good. These walnuts came from Harris Farm, and uh, they're big chunks of walnuts. You can use pecans, you can use walnuts. I just happen to have a ton of walnuts we picked up out on the ground mm. and shelled. Oh, wow. Yummy. Wow, yummy. Just a hint of cinnamon and a whole lot of rich chocolate. Now, what do you think of that? I think that looks yummy enough to eat. I Let's think that looks in. yummy. I think Doreen had a good idea. This was a great recipe, guys. Angela, I promised you this was going to be rich and hot. Oh, well, Doreen! Doreen! Hey. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Home from college. I Just... smelt this all the way in Atlanta, so I had to come up. Uh-huh, uh -huh. okay, good idea. <laughs> Tori, there you go, honey. The third generation gets the cake. Three generations, a great recipe. Bye-bye. It's great.